Welcome to the 1 March 2021 Town of Berlin Select Board meeting. I'm the new town administrator, Vince Conti, and um, we'll be hosting this meeting tonight with the assistance of Mr. Tom Badowski. And I'd just like to thank you all for joining. Um, with that, I will turn it over to the Select Board Chair, Mr. Town. Interesting opening. <laughs> <laughs> um, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the March 1st, 2021, regularly scheduled select board meeting for the town of Berlin to order. Uh, with us is uh, uh, Flo Smith, John Quinn, Justin Lawrence, myself, also uh, <coughs> Vince Conti, our town administrator, um, Tom Badowski, our assistant town administrator, and Diane Isabel, town treasurer. Um, additions or changes to the agenda Vince. Yes, I have uh, two small changes. There's one additional liquor license to be added for jo Dollar General at 750, 1755 US Route 302. And I would like to remove the minutes from February 1st until we've till I've completed the uh, requested revisions and get that review out for review. Okay. Um, any public comment? I have a question or point of order. Brad, half a million? What's that, Peter? Yes, it is. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't identify myself. My picture is not there, so, but I am. Um, my question is, when we come to the item for Vast Irish Hill, will we have an opportunity, will voters have an opportunity to speak? Well, we try to take and keep lines of communications open. I would think so. Okay. I asked that question only because uh, at the February 1st meeting, um, I did comment along with a number of other people at the outset of the meeting. And when it came time for the board to discuss the, the item, my mic was off, uh, not on my end. So I, would like to think that there will be opportunity for people to comment if it's appropriate. Okay. <clears throat> Any other public comment? Uh, yes, this is Winton Goodrich. I'd like to uh, weigh in on the snowmobile uh, process with VAST. Uh, that'll be at 7.45. Roughly. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll come back on at that time then. Oh, you don't have to leave. You can stay. Well, I, I'll I'll stay, but I'll I'll mute my mic and uh, yeah, and my picture. Okay. Uh, any other public comment? Very good. Hearing none. Uh, Treasurer's report, Diane. I don't have anything this time. Okay. Um, Trey Collier's. Uh, a permit for uh, working the right of way. Uh, yeah. yeah, um, there he's looking for basically a curb cut permit out on the Jones Brook Road for construction project that he has in place. I believe I sent the document out to, to everyone. I move approval for the uh, curb cut permit for Trey Collier on Jones Brook Road, and I second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Aye. Motion. Um, you're all set then, Trey. Uh, let's see here. Uh, liquor licenses then. We have one for um, the, uh, Dollar General and uh, CVS Pharmacy. If I have a motion. I make a motion to approve Dollar General 1755 US Route 302 liquor license and also CVS Pharmacy. Near a okay. second. 
I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Uh, okay, Vince, the CRS community rating system. Yes, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this and then Tom may want to jump in to add some more. Um, this is basically um, the community rating system. We're currently at a class nine. We have the possibility to move up to a class eight. Um, what that has to do with is the flood hazard insurance for the residents. Um, and what that change in class would mean dollar wise to the residents is currently at a class nine going to a class eight, it would give a, an additional $7,477 savings in their premiums overall. So that would result in about a $15,000 savings to our residents moving from a class nine to a class eight. Um, in order to do that, there was a document that was sent out as well um, that, that uh, Tom had actually put together. That's a roadmap on what's required for a timeline to get there for this year. Uh, meaning uh, May 3rd would be the deadline to be able to get there uh, that we'd have to achieve. Um, and the biggest probably portion, and Tom, jump in anytime at this point, uh, you're comfortable. Uh, there would need to be from the town one change in the language um, in our zoning um, ordinance to uh, to help us qualify for that. Uh, that's correct, Vince. And if, if the that was sent out in advance under section 2202H1G. Uh, under the flood hazard uh, overlay district, we need we would need to add language at least one foot above base flood elevation. And uh, how we become would become eligible is that the state of Vermont has GIS mapping capability, and they've offered to map some of our areas that may uh, show up in the flood prone area. But if, if there are if there are no um, structures there, we can get credit for for having those as um, conservation areas. And so, uh, right now there are 34 structures participating in the program. Out of a uh, uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, 34 out of 161. So the whole idea behind community rating system is to try to make flood insurance more affordable and the end goal is to uh, save save the seventy five hundred dollars that uh, Vince mentioned on the 34 properties but get more of the 161 properties to participate so um, the what the select board would uh would really need to look at the planning commission has reviewed this and the planning commission uh, is uh, is agreeable to their upfront piece of this the select board would have to hold a, uh, a special meeting on what's the date, April 12th, uh, hearing to to hear this. That's in between your meetings, so that's what the select board would need to commit to to make this May 3rd deadline. Um, what's the downside to doing this? I don't think of any, John. It's um, the, the reason we, the the town doesn't have the software or the hardware to do the GIS mapping. Uh, it's something that the state approached us on. It's, I think it's a win-win. I don't think there's any downside for the town of Berlin. Is this the Agency of Natural Resources? It is, yes. Ned Swanberg from a and R. Okay. Would it, does it have potential to negatively affect any of the Berlin residents? depending on how, where and how their house sit, sits? Not that I'm aware of. Participation in, in flood insurance is a voluntary. Um, okay. uh, I, I guess if you have a FEMA loan, you're, you're required to, to put your, you to participate in flood insurance. But if you're not participating in a, in a, a federally funded 
loaning pro loan process, you are you're not required to purchase flood insurance. The the land that's going to be put into uh, conservation, you said, it's not conservation. It's, it's not conservation, Brad. It's it's uh, showing to FEMA and and their insurance company ISO that there are no structures in uh, the areas from our zoning regulations because we have setbacks to streams and such. Uh, yes, baked in yeah. our zoning regulations. It's those setbacks. It's it's not. Gotcha. It's not a conservation per se. Yep. So, well, let's have a, a motion to uh, um, pursue the community rating system. I make the motion to proceed with the community rating system as presented tonight. Near a second. I'll second. It. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, Fisher Road culvert vents. Yeah. Um, Tom, you're probably better equipped to speak to this one than I am as well at this it's point. Just a, it's just an update uh, from the last meeting. The town has applied to the state um, insurance bank. Uh, we So we're waiting for the final vote tally at tomorrow's town meeting. Uh, you may recall there's a, a ballot uh, initiative requesting uh, town support of that uh, project to replace that culvert. Uh, again, we have we have submitted the application to the state and, uh, insurance bank, but uh, we haven't we haven't heard if they've approved it or not yet. So all the paperwork's in. It's just a matter of waiting for the vote. That is correct. I'm assuming they're going to approve it. They gave every indication they would. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. We don't have anything tonight for this one. Um, should have uh, payable on the warrants. I have that in front of me. I can do that. Sure. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 21G18 with checks 2936 to 2964 in the amount of $95,281.69. cents. Here a second. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Vince, would you mind having all of the participants or all the listeners here mute their microphones? I think Paul. Uh, at the moment has a bunch of noise coming out of his. Hey, we'll take care of that. Okay. I, I um, think everyone's muted now. Um, let's see here. Minutes from January 18th and February 1st. Brad, just a point. Sorry, this is Vince. Um, at the beginning, in the the changes to the agenda, I removed uh, the February first minutes. Yeah. Okay. So the minutes from January eighteenth. I make the motion to approve the minutes from January eighteenth, twenty one, this evening. I'll second that. Here, here a second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. A motion carries. Um, committee and board appointments and bylaw policies, Spence. Yep, that was something that uh, uh, was requested uh, a few meetings ago to review and look at. 
Um, I made uh, drafts of both those documents. I sent them out to the select to the select board uh, for review. Uh, hopefully you've had a chance to review them and just looking um, for approval to move forward with the adoption of those um, board appointments and bylaw policies by the board. Uh, hear a motion on this. I did not have a chance to review them, so I will um, step back from making the motion. Yeah, I, I unfortunately I, 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 I didn't either. Well, I missed the email as well, so uh, I'm not sure. Maybe we'll bring it up next meeting. Okay, Vince, we'll take and uh, we'll take and move this next meeting. Very well, got it. Thank you. My apologies. No problem. Okay. Vast Irish Hill Trail. Excuse me, Brad. Yeah. So uh, at the request of the select board, I placed some folks on mute. So if they're having trouble unmuting themselves, they could raise their hand and I, I will unmute them that way. If, uh, if you unraise your hand uh, by going down to the participants at the bottom of your screen, clicking on participants, find your name there and hover over it and there is a raise your hand or you could do like Peter is doing now and, and actually raise your hand on a video. So, um, so, uh, so um, Vince, you'll recognize if somebody's raising their hand on the video, let, let me know if I need to unmute them. Sure. Brad. How would you like to do this? Is there a procedure that we're going to follow? Is everyone going to make their public comments and then the board's going to talk about it? Or is this going to be, there, uh, if there's a motion out there, someone makes one, second it, and then we have discussion. How are we going to do this? I'd like there to be some kind of order to it. Yeah, just, just to keep everyone on the same page so we everyone knows what we're doing. Yeah. Well, um... Why don't we take and um, we'll, well, we're running a little early here. So what we'll do is we'll take and let the, um, let the uh, public have their say for, oh, somewhere around 750. Then we'll take and have a board, we'll, the board will discuss it. So if everybody can keep their comments to about two to three minutes, it'd be, uh, help so to that end josh walker has his hand up oh okay okay well i guess i'll uh, start it off with um just what i would like to try to get accomplished tonight and that is that um we hope that the select board will approve making a trail so the snowmobile club can get from berlin corners to northfield working along with the conservation committee for the most feasible route we have already found and flagged in our eyes the most sensible route through with the least impact by using existing trails and log roads, but we'll see what the conservation committee thinks of it. We have also done a drawing material list and a cost to improve the bridge on Darling Road and have met with uh, Jason Borg from the Agency of Natural Resources for bridge approval and he's approved it. We've done all this still with not knowing if we can have a trail or not. So hopefully we can navigate through this tonight of approving at least a trail. Not, you know, it doesn't have to be Darling Road. It doesn't have to be Ridgeline Trail, but I think we should be able to approve a trail and make one through. And if um, you, I don't know if everybody is familiar Someone just put Josh on mute. Did someone? I can't hear, hear any of that? Josh. I didn't hear you. You didn't hear any of it? Just the last 10 seconds, Josh. I didn't hear. Yep. Also, um, I don't know why someone, uh, I didn't mute myself. So, um, so I, don't, I don't know where you left, where I left off. It, meet, meet with the Agency of Natural Resources about the bridge and got bridge approval you, from the yeah, natural resources. You heard that, and yep. then about um, 
um, ma uh, making a trail through, whether it be the Ridgeline Trail, the Darling Road Trail, or us just going and cutting a trail through. If there is, um, you know, it's under my understanding that the, uh, the Irish Hill Management Plan shows that snowmobiles are already approved there. And there was one lot that got bought after, and, and, and it got dropped through the cracks that this trail was not approved on this one Lawson lot. Um, I think that instead of the um, conservation board going and rewriting the whole management plan, why can't they just send an addendum to Vermont Land Trust to have that's an existing road that everybody uses through this law already for us to use that? And, and if not, let us go on some other property and cut around this Lawson lot and, and continue on. Is there any objections to that or, uh, you know, I don't know if as, as a select, all the select board read the Irish Hill management plan. I, yeah. I, um, is, is there any, um, when I read the, the, the deed to it, there was the, the, the caveat that there was no, there was to be no motor vehicles up there. When did that change? That, that's what I like to know because I remember going to the public hearing that everybody in town came to because it was uh, pretty important to people to make sure that they could still do their outdoor activities up there. And, and I don't think it should have ever changed from having access for four wheelers and dirt bikes and snowmobiles. I never saw where that changed. I, excuse me? So it's still, if you read further below in the management plan, it still states that there is uh, that snowmobile, it says motorized vehicles, and then there's an exception where snowmobiles uh, are, are allowed to be used. But the management plan that's in place absolutely allows for snowmobile usage on the property. Uh, and as far as I understand, the Darling Trail is a class four trail that's currently also allowed to be used because of the right of way through the conserved land. Based on all the conversations and dialogues that I've had with individuals, the existing plan would actually be effective. That's not to say that we shouldn't alter it to make it more suitable to the needs of the town and the residents, but uh, currently, if you read it, it, it does say that it's allowed allowed for usage. And in fact, I have a I got an email from the conservation commission um, stating because one of my questions was about accessibility um, and. I can't remember who it was with the Conservation Commission, but I was told that currently uh, people with accessibility issues have every right to snowmobile and ATV up there. So I, I, I don't know how you, I mean, that's just what I've heard, what I've been told by the commission. Uh, another point I'll make on that, on the trail also, when we, when we went and based putting the snowmobile trail, you know, opening that trail back up, we went with the approved trail that was already there where we had approval on Darling Road and the Ridgeline Trail. So we went using the Darling Road and the Ridgeline Trail and then extending the Ridgeline Trail onto um, Berlin Town Forest land, which is, doesn't have any covenants, no protection. It's just the conservation board and the select board have to agree, or, or just the select board actually, has to agree to let us go through on that last piece of parcel, that parcel of land that abuts to the Northfield town line. And so that was the only parcel that we thought that we had to get permission for. Now it's, it, you know, after, you know, bringing this up with the conservation board, we can't use any of it, it seems. It seems like they bought some lot in the middle of the mountain that doesn't allow any, any uh, motorized vehicles, which, which they shouldn't have. And um, they they should have had that approved before they just went and bought this and, and making agreements with Vermont Land Trust. Well, they obviously had the uh, approval of the select board because they can't spend money without the approval. Yeah, I don't okay. know when. Oh, uh, uh, um, sorry, uh, uh, we, we've got some other residents yeah. uh, raising their hand that would like to speak to this. Yeah. Peter. Peter, you're on mute. How's this? Can you hear me now? There you go. 
I, uh, I wanted to commend the select board for their decision on February to entrust the study of this question to VAST and the Conservation Commission. I think that is the appropriate process. Um, the Conservation Commission was um, set up with Vermont State Statutes, Title 24, Chapter 118, which allows a town, in this case, a town of Berlin, to establish a conservation commission. And once that happens, then VSA 4505 gives the powers and duties uh, to administer those lands to the conservation commission. All of these are subject to approval by the select board, of course. And in addition to that, VSA 4506 gives the authority to for disposition of any of these properties. And that includes changes in use of any of these properties to the Conservation Commission. Having said that, I just think I want to go back to February 1st, the board's unanimous decision to request that VAST study the question the request by VAST with the Conservation Commission is the appropriate uh, process to, to thrash this out. And I don't think um, you have enough time in your meeting to thrash out the details here. Peter, I, I would agree with you uh, on 99% of what you said, where I see the difference because I made the motion one, we didn't have anyone from VAST at that meeting and uh, hadn't done the dil due diligence to know exactly how much time they needed in order to build bridges and do those types of things. I still think that the uh, VAST and the Conservation Committee should be building the management plan together for how we're going to take care of the trails. As far as whether or not it's approved, I think that's a 100% a select board decision. Um, and I, th I don't think that we need, I think they can be parallel tracks. I think you can do the management plan over here and make sure we're addressing and mitigating as many concerns as possible. And over here, give some kind of affirmation, some kind of certainty to VAST that we want this to happen so they can start building bridges and updating trail maps and doing all of those things that are needed to be done. No, that, no. That's really what I was trying to do. I, think I, mean. the question, I, I agree with that too. I think the question think. is whether uh, the voters want it done and that's to be determined. I think uh, it should be given every opportunity. And I think authorizing it before the study happens and before the public hearing happens that you folks voted on um, is letting uh, the, the, the horse out of the barn um, and I, and I think that the, uh, the turnout that you've seen and the feedback that you've heard, if you, if you listen to it and weigh it, you'll see that there's a, a pretty even balance, a pretty fair balance of opinions on both sides, and it requires a study. Now, I gather from all the correspondence that I've seen that the select board and various people have been studying this for what has been characterized as a long time. Uh, I haven't been in on that. I'm not aware of that. But the fact that you've been looking at it for a long time doesn't mean that now, because there's snow on the ground and somebody wants to build a bridge, uh, that you need to make the decision precipitously. I think your decision on the first was appropriate. I think that study needs to happen before you reach a decision. So it wasn't, it wasn't a study that we were doing. It was a management plan that that was part of that vote. It wasn't a study. Well, you know, we can't tell that because we haven't seen the minutes from that um, meeting. You, you, um, you talked about it again on the 15th or the 18th, the next meeting in February, <clears throat> and perhaps you clarified it. But at the, on the first, the, the, the decision was to have the, the Conservation Commission and VAST study the question with a public hearing to follow on June 1st. Um, I believe, that, I believe. That, that, that means there would be no decision prior to the public hearing. Right? I, 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 
I, I disagree with that yes. um, from my perspective in our meeting. We made a motion to help rewrite the management plan utilizing outside. We made, um, we did want public involvement, um, but it wasn't to do a study in any way. So I apologize that the minutes aren't out and approved for your review, review um, at this point. Can I weigh in for a minute? I stayed for that decision. I listened to the wording. I get in. Um, if you have a recording, maybe you want to check it. I think um, the, the, the message was clear. The intent was clear to have those two groups crash out to see if a, a, a trail was feasible and to weigh in with the board, your board, before June 1st, so you could have a public hearing on June 1st to discuss it publicly. Can I, can I weigh in on a few uh, things, Phil. Brad? Yeah, go ahead, Phil. Uh, let me just, speaking on behalf of the Conservation Commission, uh, go over a few things and the steps we've taken in the past month to begin work on resolving this issue. Uh, the Conservation Commission is meeting with members of VAST on March 15th at six o'clock to discuss some of the outstanding issues in regards to the criteria already stated in our easements. And we have a list of questions that hopefully VAST can answer to clarify these concerns. Second point is the, uh, the Conservation Commission plans to be at every select board meeting to answer questions and to be here for a resource as needed. Uh, I'm on tonight. It looks like Wendy's also listening in tonight. Uh, the commission has agreed with the select board's suggestion of possibly finding a third party with experience in resolving land use issues. And we've given Vince some leads on possible resources to do just that. The fourth item is the Conservation Commission in the process of creating a steering committee to include interested individuals who represent specific user groups. We intend to meet the third week of March and the purpose of this community steering committee is to consider not only all the viewpoints concerning the vast trail, but other outdoor activities that take place on Irish Hill. Now these user groups include vast members, hunters, dog walkers, mountain bikers, hikers, bird watchers, skiers, snowshoers, and we've had Berlin residents already express interest in being on the steering committee, including Peter Schober, Josh Walker, Wynn Goodrich, Ron Lyons, Trevor Whipple, Brad Lockwood, and Connor Peterson, representing those groups. So, and so I've heard realize the, the Conservation Commission realizes there may need to be a multifaceted approach given time constraints for applying for grants and things like that. We understand that. But we're determined as a commission to ground truth all the trail proposals adhering to the conservation criteria that is already validated and in our present plan. So as the commission, you know, we're appointed kind of stewards of town forests and public lands, and there may be some conditions that can't be fully vetted until the land begins to fully thaw, vegetative growth begins in mid to late June. Now it's important to determine, you know, what the soil is, growth of specific fauna and grasses, and that may not happen as quickly as we would like, given the uncertainty of spring conditions. However, I'm not sure May 15th, we can determine all those things. So this might be a multifaceted dual thing as we move forward. And I'm not sure how the select board will do that, but as a conservation commission, we, we believe it's really important to vet all those criteria as the ground thaws. And that may not be till July 1st, if, if this winter continues the way it is. Now, in closing, just several questions we'd like to ask the board as a commission. What exactly is the board expecting from the commission by June 1st? We were assuming it would be a recommendation with an amended management plan. And secondly, as we look forward or towards hiring someone to help us in this process, who will be paying for that person? We're uncertain on those two things. So that's just kind of a quick synopsis of what's happened in the last month for the Conservation Commission. Uh, we've got a lot of irons in the fire and wheels are moving. So the conception or the, the appearance that the Conservation Commission is dragging its feet or not doing due diligence and getting things done is not true at all. We are, as a volunteer board, we put a lot of hours in and we're working very hard 
to come to some sort of resolution. And as I said, our first big step before we move on is we'd really like to get this vast meeting uh, together. We have a list of questions there. Dave and Mark are eager and willing to meet with us. And I assume it's open, but it'll be six o'clock on March 15th. And thereafter, I think things will even move more quickly as we get answers. So, Phil, I have a I have a couple of things, and I can answer your questions. But first, could you send me the minutes of these public meetings that you're having? Because by statute, as Peter showed us, these are all public meetings, and if you're deliberating and making decisions, it has to be done in public forum with minutes. There's no way around that. Yeah, we have, advisor, we have minutes. And and the, yeah, and the the last, we have minutes, and the last we have minutes. And I just have a question with Vince today on um, when we zoom. And it's recorded. The Zoom recording is available to everybody. As far as I know, it should be posted on the website, town website. And okay. I assume the select board meeting does the same. If, if you could send me Zoom the meeting. last six months worth, that would be great. Okay. Should, should be on the website, our minutes. Well, yeah, okay. they're on the website. But the... The recent meeting this week is recorded on Zoom, and we haven't submitted meetings on that uh, minutes on that meeting yet. Okay, because there was some confusion last week when Wendy Lynn said that you're advisory only and you didn't take votes or do minutes. So there seems to be some confusion on the committee, and that that's fine as long as you have it worked out. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm going to weigh in. John, I did not say that we don't take minutes. I said that we do not vote in the same way that you vote. In other words, your vote carries weight. We've come to consensus when we usually discuss things, which is a different thing than what you're presenting. If you have minutes for all that, then that's that's great. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Burley. You're muted. <clears throat> Mr. Purley, we can't hear you. You're on mute still. There you Can are. you hear me now? There yes. you go. Yes. Sorry about that. Um, once the vast trail goes in, it's there's no getting it out ever. It's there forever. So before the town makes the decision, I'm hoping that um, certainly the Conservation Commission will be uh, listened to and that they will have time to do the kind of studies on how it affects not only the trail and the land that the snowmobile, uh, the snowmobiles will traverse, but uh, adjacent property owners to the, uh, to the land the, that the trail is on and how it will affect them and hopefully input from some of those people. Um, if all of those things are done and due diligence, as you people talk about, is done, um, then that's the good process. To rush this thing through, to uh, not give the Conservation Committee enough time uh, and facilities, whatever they need, to make a decent study of this, I think would be a mistake. Um, VAST has a lot of trails. They don't necessarily need this one if things about it are really counter to um, what might happen to the town and, and the people near that trail. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Purley, on that, uh, once the trail, if the trail is approved, it's, it's, uh, they have to um, come back every year to get the approval again. Also, um, the Conservation Commission should be going up there at, in the spring to see what kind of damage, it, if any, was done. So it, it, if the VAS gets the approval this, this year, it doesn't necess necessarily mean it's an ongoing thing. Has it ever happened that VAS trails were eliminated once they were installed? Yes. Oh, yes. yeah. yeah. In fact, that whole mountain used to have trails going up and over it. Since eliminated them. Okay, it's good to know. Yeah, it, the the important thing is is that uh, you can look at this as a trial or you, or or however you want to look at it, but 
it's a year to year approval. And if there is damage or if there's something that they're, they're not willing to, uh, to change, we can have that discussion later. Okay. Um, I think it still bears not rushing it in without really examining everything. Uh, yeah. what, do you think, what do you consider rushing? Because we've been talking about this since October. So I'm just looking, you know, everyone has a different perspective on what Russian, rushing a situation is. Well, what is yours? I mean, is it, is it one year or is it five years? What, what's your time frame look like here as far as rushing? Uh, my time frame, I guess, since they know much more about this than I do, would be a time frame that would be suitable for the Conservation Commission. So if, if they wanted a five-year study, that would be suitable. I'm sorry? So if they su suggested a five-year study, that would be suitable. Is that where you're going? Um, yeah. I, I mean, if I believe that the people on the Conservation Commission are not trying to ax the trail, but they want to find out enough stuff about it. And the the there was a June June first deadline, and I mean, if the conservation, I think they can the the commission feels that's reasonable, then let's go with that. Okay, I can weigh in on that also. Um, I I think the important thing is not necessarily what the precise time is. The important thing is, are we getting answers to questions that we have given to vast? Um, and there are multiple questions that are still open. We have asked. Um, the questions to local representatives. We're now moving it up the level so that we can talk to David Rillo and talk to Mike, Mark Reeves and see if we can get answers to questions. Um, some of the questions that are important to us is um, the Ridgeline Trail is quite steep. Um, how are we going to share that with pedestrians and motorized um, a motorized vehicle? And I know that People on snowmobiles don't necessarily feel like there's a problem, but I believe that people who walk or ski or snowshoe may consider that a problem. Um, so we're looking to get from VAS examples of other public land with that type of use and how is that managed? So we know how to manage that on our property. That would be one thing. Um, we still haven't got a written thing about what type of um, what type of maintenance may be needed up front on the Darling Trail. The Darling Trail goes to a class two wetland. Um, and if there are going to be any movement of land, in other words, if the drainage ditches are going to be widened, if there's any woody vegetation that's going to be removed, that requires that um, somebody from Department of Environmental Conservation at least looks at it to see if it needs permitting. And if it needs permitting, who pays for that permitting? So that's another open question that we don't have an answer to. Um, there's been conversations about um, connecting the communities along Route 12 into the vast trail. And I'm having a hard time seeing how those communities will be connected into the, concur the currently proposed trail. So we are we have that question that we've given to VAS. So we've got a list about a page of questions that we have given already to David Berlow. Um, and the meeting that we have with them okay. is so we can precisely sit down and get answers. So, you know, once we have answers to the questions, then we can move forward, but we don't have answers right now. So some of those questions we've addressed in these meetings over and over, like the steepness of the trail. Okay. I guess I don't, what is the answer to that? It, it, it's not. And in fact, if you, in a last meeting, I believe we, we talked about several places including Northfield and Worcester and Callis and all the surrounding towns. And that's why I asked if any of you have ever been on a snow machine, I asked that eight or nine months ago. And I think uh, maybe one of you had said you, you previously owned a snow machine back in the seventies or early eighties and the rest of you hadn't. So. And, you know, I think all of these things are addressable and we have talked about them in, in several different meetings. Um, just because you don't like the answer doesn't mean we don't talk about them, Wendy. 
And as far so as the- I've seen, I want to just counteract oh. that for just a minute. I've seen standards for snowmobiles that are published out on state websites that recommend a grade of less than 10%. The average grade going from the Darling Trail to the Ridge is 14. There are pitches in there, multiple pitches that are 20% or more. Um, there's no run out. Um, so I, as a pedestrian, are not necessarily comfortable in that situation. And we've had a lot of input from Berlin residents who are also not comfortable with that. So that would be a big question that needs to be resolved because what happens when people aren't comfortable is you displace them. So all of a sudden the people who walk on those trails um, are displaced off the trails because they're not comfortable. And our easement um, prioritizes non-motorized recreation. So we do need to resolve those questions. Yeah, so, so as we said before, again, when, when Josh talked about it, these trails are 10 foot feet wide and will be groomed, right? So when you think about a 10 foot, 10 foot wide trail, as we've discussed, there's plenty of room if a snow, machine, so, snow machine's coming the other way. Does it, can it make someone nervous? Probably, you know, depending on how familiar people are with things like that. But there's tons and tons of signage that VAST has put all over the state for different situations and including in Plainfield where it drives straight through the center of a, a state of Vermont wetland and there's signs on both sides you know warning people to stay on the trail war warning people that it is a wetland area all of these things so you know <laughs> I, well, that I'm looking, question is I'm between you vast in the state that is not a decision we make I'm um, looking so and, and it's not a decision that the conservation committee makes about what the trail access is for the Route 12 corridor. I guess my point is that I can't make a decision about the wetland, but the state may have something to say about that. Yep. Um, my second thing is I would like to see an example of public land with high pedestrian use on that type of slope um, that has a snowmobile trail going through it. And I know that there's a lot of private land like that. We have it near my house. But that's a whole different situation than a town that has pedestrians using the land, a large number of pedestrians using the land with that type of slope in snowmobiles. And I know most people are very careful in the snowmobiles. Um, and I know under most conditions, they're probably controllable. But, you know, let's say you've got ice, let's say you've got slush, let's say some of the rocks are exposed, it's very eroded up there. Um, the potential to have loss of control does exist. Yeah, for someone that's never been on a snow machine, again, the same loss of control can happen on a mountain bike, Wendy. Yeah, mountain, mountain bike, mountain bike is much smaller. I, I ski, I backcountry ski, I've ridden ATVs quite a bit. I'm, I'm familiar yeah. with this. There's a big difference between a skier losing control and a snowmobile losing control. A mountain biker. Or right, a mountain biker. Quick Listen. comment. Uh, uh, let's John, see here. John, in all fairness, I will tell you that I have owned a snowmobile and I have been on all of those trails, many of them before they were trails. Um, and the areas that I hear talked about tonight as being steep are extraordinarily steep. They were made less so when the bulldozers went up there to build the road to the tower, to build the tower but they're still steep. So um, you asked me a while back if I would walk those trails with Josh in the spring. I said, yes, I would be glad to do that. <clears throat> I think that's appropriate. Um, I think um, you may find that there's not width up there for the groomer, but that's not for me to decide. That's a vast question and it's a legitimate question. Um, but I think there are many questions that still have to be answered. It, it, this conversation may have been going on for months. Many of us are not aware that it has been going on for months. Um, and we're just trying to get up to date now because we haven't yeah. seen the minutes from your last meeting. Uh, yeah. And I think, again, you know, your decision, the board's unanimous decision on February 1st to wait for, if, if I hate to put it that way, but wait for 
the study, the conversation, the meetings, whatever you want to call it, with VAST for their input and the Conservation Committee to, to represent the town in preparation for a public hearing on June 1st is the way to go. To, to make a decision before that, I think, was irresponsible. Okay. Oh, Mr. Town, sorry. We've yeah. got two people, two people with their hands up, um, Josh Walker and then Mr. Paul Purley. Uh, we also have Mr. Winton. Oh, Mr. Good Winton also. Since he haven't, we haven't heard from you, Winton, why don't you start? <laughs> You're on mute. All right, can you hear me now? Yep. Uh, so I'm, I'm pleased to be able to weigh in on this, uh, like Peter. Uh, I'm a day late and a dollar short, but I have some interest and I think I can add some, uh, some comment here. Uh, we've lived on Darling Road on, in West Berlin since 77. And that was back when Darling Road and the class four uh, portion of it were snowmobile trails. Uh, for six years, I was a state trooper that did snowmobile patrol. So I've not only been on snowmobiles, I have policed snowmobiles. And so I have a pretty good idea of what the good things are and the bad things are. I also taught snowmobile safety courses for the state police. Uh, so that's, that's my background. And I'm not opposed to snowmobiles. I am very concerned about if the trail uh, goes and the route that it does from Berlin Pond, uh, Brookfield Street, over and then hangs a left on top of the ridge, what's going to prevent that from continuing back down uh, Darling Road on Class 4 and then eventually on Class 3? because that's how the access happened uh, in the 70s and 80s uh, through Pine Ridge or Pine Hill and Chandler Road. And I know there are folks that would like access from that direction. Uh, I am concerned like Peter and others have, have shared about the erosion. In fact, the erosion is so bad on the lower portion of, of Darling Class 4 Road that snowmobilers can't navigate up it. They have to go uh, outside the right of way and through the woods, and that's all private land. And also my neighbor, uh, Emily Medley and Pavel Cherkov live within 30 feet of that intersection of class three and class four road. My other concern is you allow snowmobiles or you're gonna allow ATVs and dirt bikes. Um, so that's kind of my background and my interest. Uh, I volunteered to serve on the steering committee uh, with the conservation commission. I think they have a wonderful uh, approach. And for the next meeting, I'm gonna add, uh, uh, make a recommendation for another uh, volunteer. His name is uh, Bob Capabianco. He's a horse logger, a woodlot manager, and an environmentalist. Uh, he lives in Williamstown, but I think he might uh, be able to add uh, some insight that others may not have. So that's, that's what I wanted to share with the board tonight. And again, I reiterate, uh, if you allow it, if you allow snowmobiles on the, the path that, the, uh, that you're looking at now, I really don't want to see it come down over the hill, and especially on Darling Road, because it's a very windy road and very dangerous. And I've experienced it uh, for a good number of years until the select board shut that down. I think that's a, that was a great decision. And I'll back off now and listen to other people. And thank you. Brad, <laughs> just to let you know, Josh, Ron and Paul all have their hands up. I just okay. have one question for Winton. Winton, thank you. I'm just curious, what year uh, did the did the select board shut down that trail? Do you remember by chance? I don't, but all of a sudden there just weren't any snowmobiles on it. And I, I, I just attributed that to the, the it wasn't as popular. As gas prices were high. Uh, I would say that uh, probably that stopped around the early 80s, maybe 85 or so. Um, I don't remember much activity okay. after that time. Okay, Josh. Okay, thank you. Okay, I just want to, uh, let's see. Because oh, so you can't hear me. So um, I just wanted to follow up on like with Wendy on the uh, steepness. And you she can go right over to Millstone. There's uh, a bunch of snowmobile trails in Millstone where there's bikers, hikers, snowshoers, skiers, dog walkers, frisbee players all on the same trail. And the trails are well over a 20% grade. 
So if you needed to talk to somebody, see somebody other than talking with us on our, uh, on our meeting on the 15th, there's close by trails that are shared by many people and they're on, in the hills. And I don't know if you've been into Millstone, but there's some steep hills over there. And then um, the other thing was about um, accessing and it was about um, maybe um, continuing and maybe getting a trail over onto Darling Road on the uh, West Berlin side. You know, that was just going to be for the future and for those people to work out how they'd be able to get snowmobiles up to the trail on the mountain. Um, another thing was about, you know, you guys have, we've already had a public hearing on this. There's been a public hearing uh, about a month ago on this. So we've had the public hearing. Um, the trail has already been approved on the Irish Hill management plan. And, and I don't think it was ever shut down by the select board. It was just stopped being used because of lack of snow and lack of interest in the town to keep it open. That's when the town of Berlin had their own snowmobile club. And let's see what else I have on here. In the steering committee, I think that's a great idea. But for us with VAST, we don't want to sit out, sit while you do this whole committee on dog walkers, on hunters, on whoever else that, you know, has an interest on the mountain. We want to get the snowmobile trail. We don't see where we have to change the plan for putting the snowmobile trail through there. Um, I have no problem with sitting on a steering committee and working through that, but I don't think that that should be the hinge point on the select board giving us permission for the trail. We will definitely want to work with the Conservation Commission and everybody in the town of Berlin to make this work for everybody. And okay. also about the June 1st meeting, I had missed that. I didn't know anything about the June 1st meeting also. So, or, or about having this all come back to another public hearing on June 1st. I heard nothing about that until these last couple meetings. Well, with VAST, you know, as a club, we have to get grant applications into VAST so that we can get money for these trails, for, uh, you know, trail upgrades, for bridge upgrades, and for their budget, for their next year's budget. So that's why we kind of need to have this decision made before May so that we can get our applications in for what we need to have done and approved by VAST for funding. Okay, uh, uh, Ron. Get on muted here. And... There you go. Well, thank you. Um, I think that one of the things that going back to uh, the February 1st meeting really felt very comfortable. There were lots of people had different viewpoints on both sides, and that's always the case. I work in these type of projects uh, professionally, and you always have people that, you know, people want to get things done, they're in a hurry and such, and other people don't want things. But and I thought that was a great process that was put in place is that this uh, very familiar with this ridge line been very familiar with the trail system and I think there are areas that the town really needs to well, take the time to study and make a good decision. Uh, the only way you make a good decision is really to understand the facts and I think that was where we're very fortunate as a town to have the Conservation Commission and other people jump in on this uh, to do that review. It's something that if we can get good facts in front of us I think we can make good decisions that work well for most people, you know, and there always are compromises and mitigation measures and such, but I think that uh, getting that will give us a confidence in a town that we're not setting up something that's a problem for other users, not a problem for uh, possibly for fast in the future, um, not a problem for traffic on the roadway system. Uh, that's, you know, to go, the, go through the list and most of those things on the list were in that February 1st meeting. So, so taking the time to look at those and look at them when you have some spring weather and snow melt. Right now, I walked up there, you just, uh, you know, as an environmental reviewer, you just can't see much up there now. So you need spring weather. And then I think you need some of these questions that go, uh, I thought great, I guess a great, uh, 
respect for what Vast has done over the years in the state. I'm not much of a snowmobiler. I got two 1970s models. I don't think one runs, but but they've done a good job. And I think that's one of the things that we can take some time. With a, we've got a good conservation commission. We've got good people in Vast that uh, point to things like Josh, Josh said. We have a concern. Let's let's look at some other things in the commission, uh, other areas that have been successful, and then look at our during the town planning process. Seven years of that, doing the master plan. There's um, one of the things we always said is you need to look at what we're doing with the ridge lines and conservation areas. Uh, we've had um, habitat, and we've got. Uh, use issues and noise issues and erosion issues, and all those are not unsolvable possibly, but they do have to be looked at closely and it does take a little time. Uh, once again, we're very fortunate we have a group of people that are willing to put in that time and, and do it correctly. I don't think rushing into this has any benefit to any of the parties involved, to tell the truth. Um, and whether we need to build a bridge, uh, you know, in construction, you like to know your timetable, you've got the permits and everything, but it's really important to make good decisions to back up that uh, trail, back up the bridge. And, uh, and if we get those decisions made, by looking at them closely, I think we'll get through those, I guess I call them minor, minor hurdles. A, tr a bridge will come at a time that works uh, if we to make good decisions. So. I'd strongly support going forward with what was decided in, in, uh, in uh, the last meeting, February 1st, and giving people time to work through this so we do have uh, answers on lots of different things that we need answers on. So, and, uh, Rick, once again, uh, pleased to understand, pleased with who we've got working on this and pleased with vast knowledge that they have in the trails. I think we can come up with, uh, with a good plan that works for the town and the residents and the users. So, thank you, that's about it. Okay, thank you, Ron. Uh, Trevor? Hey, Brad, Brad, I have a quick question. I just, sure. I was researching the uh, the minutes from the Conservation Commission um, and not to, not to bring something up again that, that sounds maybe like it, it's counterproductive, but transparency um, and just an understanding of, from the community's perspective would be good. And all I can see since 2019 is uh, February 3rd and February 10th of this year for minutes posted. So certainly, certainly the Conservation Commission has met several times. I'm curious if they have those minutes they can share so that we can get those put on the website so that we can be better informed. Uh, I mean, it's difficult as an advice to get information or make decisions from an advisory board or committee um, if we can't review the minutes. We, we do have those minutes. I'm not sure why they're not posted, but we can get them to you. Okay. Um, when would you be able when will you be getting those to the board? When can we get them to the board? Yeah, well, we can send them. I've, Wait a minute. I see October you did? 12th of 2020. Well, we're looking on the website right now. We see October 12th on there. We can get them to you. Under September. the Conservation Commission, I when I go to the boards and under the Conservation Commission for boards and agendas and minutes i only see those two so that's why i was asking yeah. no if you go way down to the bottom but justin we'll get those to you there's we don't need to take time up right now discussing that so we'll get you the minutes no problem okay trevor all right thanks thanks how's it going Man. i'm good i'm all right thank you um <laughs> I, you, you don't need to hear my points. I, I, I think all over again. You, you've got those; they're on the record. Um, you know the the uh, the additional. I guess one additional concern I have, or or thing I would just ask the board to make sure that you explore as this moves forward, 
is, uh, and I'm sure that Vast has a lot of experience with this, but uh, you know, in talking with folks uh, whom I work with is about potential uh, you know, legal exposure to the town. So you know, if the town is thinking uh, about moving forward with a shared use path to include motorized recreation, to just make sure that uh, town attorney reviews uh, the insurance policy from VAST, making sure that the town of Berlin is indemnified. Uh, we, we wouldn't want to get sued and then have the taxpayer have to pay for litigation, um, as well as uh, an MOU uh, about who takes care of the trail and, and when. Uh, you know, one of the, the things I heard is that, you know, there was a, uh, an agreement uh, or there's a potential if you have an agreement, uh, who, who maintains that? If you get a call, if our highway department gets a call that there's a tree down on the trail and we don't have a good MOU in place and the highway doesn't go right up and take care of it, somebody hits it and gets hurt, then the town could be sued and, and potentially be liable. So I would ask you to, uh, you know, to explore the legal documents that are being proposed uh, by VAST uh, as we move forward so that our town attorney has time to, to review those and just make sure that, uh, you know, it's not putting any potential litigation on the taxpayer for, uh, you know, additional use of that trail or to, to make sure that, that we are covered uh, by an insurance uh, policy for any, any litigation that could come out of that. And, and that also, you know, concerns me as well with the, with the road. We're going to put snow machines on a road, uh, an already road, uh, you know, a road that gets a lot of mixed use. Uh, we're going to add, I think it's roughly about a mile of uh, shared use between motor vehicles and, and snow machines and bikers, walkers, you name it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Trevor. Uh, we are now... Trevor, to address your, to address your, can I say something? We can't, okay. Um, so now we come to the select board part of the, the vast Irish Hill Trail. Um, John, would you like to start this? John, John, you're muted. I hear that like five times a day in all the <laughs> Zoom meetings that I do. I tell you, I forget that button all the time. Um, you know, for me, it's about making progress and making sure that we're moving forward here. Um, we've been going quite a while here with very little movement, even though that we have held public hearings and we have heard from all of you on several occasions. I also know that Josh has been out there collecting signatures and has you know, 150 signatures in support of the trail. Um, and, it, you know, I, I, I don't know what the June 1st uh, meeting is going to accomplish besides to hear all these uh, same concerns again from the immediate landowners around the trail. Um, and, you know, I, I live on the pond as well. Um, you know, I, I deal with all the same cars that all of you do passing by on both sides of the road, uh, walkers four wide, um, and share the same concerns about, you know, making sure uh, that we're looking to mitigate as many risks as possible if we are gonna put snow machines on the road, right? How are we going to uh, do that and what does it mean? And I think, I think that's, the, that's the big thing is making sure it's clear. But we gotta figure out a process here where we can accurately track and write these things down, almost like a frequently asked questions because we keep going around in a circle over and over and over with these same exact things. Um, and I, you know, I think Josh has pointed out on a number of occasions, um, things that you know, the VAST would do. He's shared a management plan uh, from other towns. Like this is all stuff that we've done and now um, against the select board, against I think the majority of the select board wishes, the conservation committee isn't doing just an amendment for snow machines. They've decided to take up the entire management plan again to address all the different things that they've missed in the past, including mountain bikers, including ATVs that are up there. Um, and you know, it to me it feels like. Um, the conservation committee is dead set against the snow machine trail 
and has been slow rolling it. And I, I don't mean, uh, um, you know, any offense to anyone when I say that, but that's the way it feels to me. And well, I'd, like, I'd like to see some progress. Yeah, the, um, at some point, I can't remember the meeting, but there was, a, there was an agreement or consensus between the select board and the conservation committee about um, redoing the whole plan and then going to the uh, uh, going to um, the land trust to take and get the uh, plan updated. Um, I'm no. not sure. Was that John? I, I just don't recall that. I guess it was. It was a while ago. It was that, back when Wayne and Pete, myself, uh, were all on on the board. No, uh, we've been was, talking about this for a very, very long time. The the updating of the management plan was when the when Vass started to uh, uh, ask about the trail because there was some concern about the covenants in the deed, and it was so it had to be back about the time that started. But I do remember hearing about that. And uh, do you remember any, any of this, uh, Phil? Bill? Uh, I, I, I vaguely recall it, but I don't have a date. I'm not yeah. sure. Are you thinking it was a little over a year ago? Probably. I'll have to, I'll take you and go through to. the, I'll go through my minutes, see what I can find. Um, Justin? Well, I tend to uh, agree with John there. Um, and I feel as though this has been ongoing and ongoing. I, I also feel like um, the, the reality is that the, maybe the current management plan already addresses snowmobiles um, and that it, my understanding is it, it would be acceptable. Um, and I, maybe the town should get another perspective on that. That doesn't change the idea that I think we should work with the community. We should work with every demographic that's utilizing the property. I think that every, every, I mean, I, I, I certainly want everybody that, that has access to that area, enjoy it. Um, you know, if, if I'm being told that the management plan already allows for uh, disabled or accessibility and, and use where ATVs are already allowed to drive up to the tower and snowmobiles are already allowed to drive up to the tower, um, I don't understand where that changes that piece of it. Um, is, I don't understand how that, I didn't see that in the management plan specifically, but the Conservation Commission did send me an email to that effect. Um, you know, I, I, think that, I think that the town could ask to move forward um, in a parallel path. I think there's two different paths that need to be taken here. I think that it's very important that everybody understands that if, if there were action taken, it doesn't eliminate or bypass any process that was put into place already. And it doesn't change any of the consideration. I'll, you know, uh, I think that, well, we, we have the ability to move forward. You know, the, I think uh, I'm gonna go with this right now. I'm just gonna say this, you know, to be clear with the board's intentions and for the purposes of planning, I want to make a motion to approve vast use in the Berlin Town Forest. This doesn't change any direction that we've already started working on. The motion simply works in a parallel path with our current course. Uh, this is another piece that would be required prior to moving forward. It's just a general approval. The direction of writing the plan if required for use still stands along with working beside BAST and other members of the steering committee, the commission is formed to plan the best routes, signage and other items that we may need to mitigate. By doing this, we will allow enough time for BAST to plan for the bridge and updates on their end as required to assist us in this public private partnership to maintain the integrity of our forest. Well, here a second. Okay. I'll second. Okay, any further discussion on this? 
Well, I, I think, you know, what, what Justin just said, and he's been in and out of service, uh, fortunately, <laughs> it was clear through that. Um, you know, the, there can be a separation here between the management plan and the trail approval. Um, and I think, you know, I think we've heard the opinions of the people that really don't want it. Um, I think where we can do another public hearing and what my intention was what all along was that we um, task uh, VAST and the Conservation Committee with doing that management plan and bringing it back um, to talk about not only the management plan, but you know how we're going to mitigate the risks that everyone has brought up. So, I, you know, I I just wanted to add that in there, but that that's it. Is this discussion open to everyone, Brad, or is it just the select board members? Uh, as long as you can keep it short, Phil. Well, I'm just, I guess I'm unclear about uh, at the last meeting, I thought there was some direction to examine the idea of having a facilitator, a consultant, or someone come in and help us in the process. And what I'm hearing uh, right now from at least two board members is more of the uh, decision already being made in polarization instead of discovery and trying to work out uh, some sort of, you know, moving forward, how we're going to resolve the issues before us. So I guess I'm asking, is the select board now no. rescinding the idea of having a facilitator come in that would be kind of neutral? Or? Would, yeah, so, so I, I can answer that, Phil, because that, that was uh, something that I had brought up and it was really a third party to write the management plan for us. Uh, to, to take input from the different groups to ensure um, that when we write it, that um, af after hearing from you all that, you know, well, we never did an update for four wheelers. We never did an update on mountain bikes. It, you know, it's gotten away from us and there's a, it's a big plan to write. It's a big undertaking. My intention was to assist the conservation committee in VAST by adding someone there to do the actual writing for us. Uh, it wasn't a third party mediator by any means. It was really someone to help us get the work done because it is such a big task. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Any other discussion? I have one question. Uh, I, wonder sure, board, I wonder if the board and uh, Josh and the Snowbill Beal Club are prepared to change a decision if you make it tonight and if you are prepared to um, build a bridge not knowing for sure whether this third party will approve your hoped for trail. Uh, I think that's a, a possibility uh, regardless of who studies the trail. Um, and so that's my question. I can't answer for VAST, but I can I can tell you that um, with the research that I've done uh, with a well-written plan, I haven't seen where the Vermont Land Trust has denied uh, usage for snow machine trails. If, if, if people have um, examples of that, I'd, I'd love to see them, but I have yet to see one. Uh, and Josh, I, you can speak for VAST because it's not my, it's not my area too. I have a just one point of order, I guess. Are we, by moving ahead on this, are you rescinding what you said on February 1st of directing us to work with VAST and the select board to mitigate concerns and have a draft of the updated management plan by June 1st? No, no. That, Not I, at all. It was Not just, at all. It was Justin's motion, so I'll let him speak. No, not at all. We're not rescinding that in any way, shape, or form. It's a parallel path. In order for VAST to move forward or us to, to make progress at any time, we would have to separately approve. I mean, it's a completely separate item to approve snowmobile use or VAST usage in the Berlin Town Forest. Uh, so that being said, the second part I said with the motion was that I want it doesn't take away from the steering committee. It doesn't take away from input. It's to help mediate with the steering committee. You guys will figure out the best route possible. You guys will figure out what needs
Am I correct, Justin? Agree. Agree. I agree. Uh, Josh? Yeah. And, uh, um, this, this third party thing, um, I think that was just if we ran into, uh, you know, I understood it as if just we ran into a roadblock where we couldn't agree between like VAS, the town and the Conservation Commission, where we'd bring in somebody to kind of mitigate everybody's needs and thoughts and wants. I don't think that where we would really, if we can, we don't need to make this a big deal. This, this has been done all over the place, snowmobile trails all over the place. Fast has insurance that's gonna cover the town of Berlin. Every snowmobile owner that has a registered machine on the trail has liability insurance, at least a minimum of liability insurance. So when they're on the road and anything was to happen, which it very, very seldom does, they have insurance. Each personal, Rider has insurance and VAST has insurance to cover the town of Berlin for if anything was to happen on a snowmobile. So when I was wondering, so you bring that up about um, snowmobilers having insurance and whether the town's liable. Well, is the town liable if a mountain biker goes off and hits a tree or if a skier goes off the trail or runs into one of those rocks you say stick up out of the trail that the snowmobilers are going to be having to avoid? It, you know, you, you guys are, it seemed to me like you're dragging so much stuff into this that really doesn't need to be. Uh, so Brad, Brad, I just want to come back to the fact that we still have a motion on the floor, on the, yeah. on the floor. Yeah. Uh, well, we're in the discussion phase of it now. So any, any other, uh, any more discussion? Well, just, just a quick note from my perspective is that, uh, I think what Wynn and Peter and other people have alluded to is people are just getting up to speed. I know that the select board member feels like we're beating a dead horse. I know that people feel like we're dragging. The reality is it is a big deal for a lot of people. It is a big deal now, Josh. It's gotten bigger. More people have gotten involved and rightfully so. This is information we're sharing with residents and townspeople. They're chiming in. To you, they might be chiming in late, but to others, it's important. So to work yes, this sir. process through, we're hearing from people you haven't seen on this call tonight, on the call February 1st, on the, oak, the call in January. People are coming forward because they have real concerns. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's, we need to vet it. That's what a public forum should be. That's what's happening. And I think in reality, people are feeling a little perturbed by it. When in course, this is the way civics works. And this is what we're all about. And I, you know, when John, when John was saying something about we've gone over and over it, I know, I know, but some people aren't up to speed. It's like, it's like Phil Scott every time on Tuesday and Friday, he has to repeat himself. Mark Levine repeats themselves. Can you imagine their role after a year of doing that twice a week? So yeah, you might have to repeat yourself. You might have to hear some people that haven't been here before. But that's what this process is about. And all we're trying to do is do the right thing, get the right information in front of us, help the board make a good decision on behalf of all the townspeople. In reality, in the long run, if we can't come to some sort of consensus, maybe the select board should throw it up for a ballot for the town. Maybe it should be voted on. I don't know. I don't think it has to come to that, but that's my two cents. I, I agree, Phil. Okay, uh, Trevor. And thanks, Brad. And I, I only respond because I think I was uh, personally responded back to by another speaker. And I thought this was a board meeting, not a not a community discussion. So uh, it's not personal. It's about risk to the town. It's about risk to me as a taxpayer. And all I ask is that the town attorney review the legal documents. That's all. Um, you know, I think I think it's different when I talk to the people that insure the town. They tell me it's very different from a mountain biker on a, on a woods trail versus a motorized piece of equipment. They tell me that the liability, the, your protection clauses in your insurance policy are very different. And I just simply ask that they be reviewed by the people that the town hires to protect all the taxpayers from undue liability. And if they say it's good, it's great. If it's not, then I would just ask that we that the board it, do your due diligence to protect all the tax base from undue liability. There we go. Okay. Thank you, Trevor. Anything else? 
To the motion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, and next on the agenda is well, yeah, I I, I do want to know, and I think everyone else probably does too. Is this the is this the five zero vote, or is this the three two vote, or is the four one vote? This is Flo, and I'm not voting in favor. Okay. I guess it's a uh, four one. Uh, let's see here. Uh, round table, Flo? Not tonight, but thank you, Brad. John? Um, af after last week and the me bringing stuff up in the, the round table, um, I, I want to be cautious. Uh, so all I'm going to say is I think at the next board meeting, we ought to discuss um, the steering committee um, and, and the composition of that steering committee and who appoints the people to the steering committee and how do we, you know, I'd, I'd just like to hear a little bit more about that. Minutes can't reflect every piece of every conversation and I understand that, but I would like to understand how um, people get appointed to it and what the public outreach is and whether or not there's gonna be any kind of select board representation or not. I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other, but. Those are just questions that I'd like to talk about at the next meeting. That's it. Okay. Um, Justin? Nothing this evening, thank you. Angelina? Nope, just uh, take care everybody. Thank you for um, your time on the board, Angelina. You're welcome. Yes, yes Angelina, thank you. You're welcome. The Anything executive session tonight? Vince? No, nothing tonight. Okay. Entertain a motion move, to adjourn. Move to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.